Morning all. The Chinese chess championship is underway. I've noticed from chessgames.com some very interesting games. Uh, the women's world champion Yifan Hu is playing. Uh, she's had a bad start actually. Uh, in round three she was playing someone quite lower rated, 2461 Liu uh, Kingnan. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, let's have a look at that game. So she was playing black. Uh, Leo uh, Kingnan uh, plays e4. She plays Sicilian c5. And now uh, he played knight c3, actually. As though it's going to be some sort of Grand Prix attack system, maybe, or a closed Sicilian. After knight c6, actually, we saw bishop b5. So very interesting stuff. Um, okay, no commitment for f4 yet. And the bishop's not going to c4. So bishop b5, as though the black pawn structure is going to be fractured. So um, Yifan does something about that. Knight d4 seems logical enough. Kick the bishop back. And now e6, as though the bishop's going to be subject to further harassment uh, later, maybe with d5 at some point. After knight g e2, the knight is just left on d4 there. Just knight g f6. White castled. Now a6, as though the bishop is going to be targeted again. Uh, but there is some cost to this. Black is weakening um, him, herself uh, a bit subtly, actually, after d3. It looks as though it's a good tempo gain, gaining space, this b5. Uh, but something horrible happens later on in the game in relation to this b5 pawn. Uh, so bishop b3, it looks as though at the moment you know, the bishop's blunted. It hasn't got much scope. Um, in fact, here though, uh, white um, didn't have to worry about the bishop now because uh, Yifan Hu uh, played actually here. Knight takes b3. I think the idea was this, like immediate bishop b7 looks good. You know, celebrating uh, the bishop pair, and maybe you know d5 later to try and liberate this bishop on the diagonal. Uh, but bishop g5 was played, and now d6. And now we see a sort of, you know, Grand Prix attack move f4 a bit later than usual. Bishop e7. Now knight g3. So this looks like quite a solid setup. White has potential dynamism on the a file with a semi open file there. But these double pawns are, you know, with double pawns you always get a bit of dynamism to celebrate. And that's a key thing to always remember. Um, so h6. Was played and and now of course um, it looks as though Bishop H4 could be awkward because of things like G5 maybe as a pawn sack. Uh, in in the game, White gave up both bishops. Now uh, let's have a quick look actually at Bishop H4. I, don't, I think G5 might be tempting. Actually, the engine's giving G6. Uh, maybe G5 is rubbish actually because of the F file. I just thought there might be some. Positional pawn sack, but here knight h5 is dangerous. Okay, this is not good because king f8 is knight e6. That's not good. So let's go back in the game um, after h6. The bishop pair was voluntarily given up then, or or not voluntarily. It had to. So now f5, gaining a bit more space. Check bishop d4 check, and now queen g5. Okay. There's one slight problem here. Um, potentially, you know, White has this dangerous f takes, cutting the Black King from castling. Uh, if Black had castled here, it looks as though this might be quite dangerous because uh, of something like Queen h5 or Knight h5. Is it though? Let's just quickly check this position. No, it seems to be okay to castle. Maybe Black could have taken the opportunity to castle there, uh, technically. So in the game, um, after King H1, Queen G5, the Knight went back, harassing this dark square bishop. The bishop was preserved. Bishop E5, eyeing H2 now. Now White takes on E6, and now the Black King's in the center, unless it's going to castle queenside. Um, now, how can this be exploitable? Knight g1 is played here uh, with seemingly powerful and useful threat of knight f3. Not only forking these guys, but protecting h2. 
queen g6 okay if queen h4 then knight f3 does the job of protecting h2 and attacking everything so queen uh, g6 and now a very surprising move I wonder if you can spot it it looks as though white isn't in the position really to do anything that active after all look at this this knight at home this knight doesn't seem to be doing much uh, restricted from key squares um, but actually there is a very active possibility here I wonder if you can guess it if I give you 10 seconds or you may want to pause the video it's quite a neat tactic actually okay I'll give you 10 seconds starting from now okay it took an engine quite a while to find it actually as well about depth 16 knight takes b5 wow you see the idea is if black took then you've got takes on a8 and now the nifty very nifty move queen a1 and how does black start to defend this position um, it's not difficult sorry it is very difficult to protect the bishop um, you might try king e7 but that's only a temporary measure to protect with the rook uh, let's let's take various ideas and, and see how they would fall here king e7 I think you just play check you force the king back then you take and then you take the rook after maybe uh, I think taking the rook is sufficient <laughs> um, so let's say bishop c6 queen a6 how is the bishop defending now bishop d7 I think again just runs into the, the rook being vulnerable just take the rook so with the king in the center yeah there is this this tactical like vulnerability um, there's nothing else really to say about this bishop here I think it can sacrifice itself threatening mate I think this is another one to cover actually this is probably the best bet actually okay I'll leave, I'm leaving the last till best bishop e4 takes queen takes e4 and it actually protects a8 from queen a8 check but here apparently queen a6 there's some other severe threats here queen c8 I think this was black's best maybe or as the game just to leave leave knight takes b5 alone not, not do anything with it um, so black ignored it now blink d5 well not ignoring it it protects c7 so that is one of the better moves okay so let's go back into the game but a neat tactic nonetheless quite subtle um, knight takes b5 so d5 protecting c7 the knight retreats and now black really hammered home e4 here by taking on c3 and then taking on e4 and actually black was close to equality uh, here it seems you know black black's doing fine actually even though the king's in the center from a technical evaluation perspective I, th I think it's less than half a pawn advantage anyway it's it's not such a big deal as you you might have thought so d takes queen takes e4 for any mate that's parried queen d5 the exchange of queens is refused rook d2 so the queen and bishop still hover over that g2 tying white down a bit rook f2 still cutting the king from castling rook f8 not minding saying well, okay I'll exchange rooks and my king's gonna be safe anyway but the king is a bit subject to harassment now after check there's another check here queen d6 and picking up a pawn okay so pawn sacrifice but um it's still it's not a huge extra pawn white has double pawns anyway so it's not such a big deal the mate threat needs to be parried here though I'm not sure queen e2 is that good if there's rook e8 as deflection here let's have a quick check on that one I think knight f3 was one of the better moves queen e2 probably runs into rook e8 yes and this this is about equal apparently from an engine or even black better slightly tiny factionally 
or no, probably just about equal. So knight f3 was played here to parry the uh, g2 threat of mate. Queen h5. So f3 needs to be uh, guarded. Rook e8. So it looks as though black actually, to be fair, has good coordination of all pieces. She was doing relatively um, okay here. The knight g5 check uh, is not so clever. You just take takes a mate on g2 again, <laughs> in case you're wondering. Um, so queen f2, queen f5, keeping the knight pinned, keeping pressure on c2. Yeah, it looks as though black should be fine here. So something goes very wrong shortly. Bishop takes f3, fracturing, fracturing white's pawns a bit more, isolated pawns now. If the queen had taken, then uh, I think queen takes c2. Uh, so black should be fine here. Check, rook e3, putting more pressure on white. Queen e5, trying to get an exchange of queens for this rook and pawn ending. Now, what's the situation here if black did take on g3 and tried rook e2? Is that so bad? Let's just quickly check this possibility. If queen takes g3, h takes, what's wrong with rook e2, you might ask? There might be rook a1. Okay. Because this, this is double pawns anyway. So if you lose this one, it doesn't really, it's not a big deal, they'll double anyway. If you take this one, it's like taking a real pawn, then you, you might get a past c pawn once you take c5. So black played queen f5 here. Now rook f2 guarding that second rank. So white seems a bit passive, but is an extra pawn up. But it's it's only a double pawn. Check rook e6. Now queen h4. And probably this is a, a blunder actually, a move 40. Maybe this is where they're getting extra time if it's um, uh, a checkpoint uh, at 40. Um, black played queen e5, which affords actually queen e4 check. e4 was, was covered here with the rook. So I wonder why queen e5 was played actually. M maybe it just wasn't expected for white to temporarily uh, sack the pawn. Apparently black is, is fine here. It's about equal technically. In fact, just maybe check seven. Say it looks as though White's the one under pressure, but with with this move that was played, uh, Queen e5, it it affords Queen e4 check, and that was pounced on. And White suddenly is getting dangerous in this rook and pawn ending here. After this next move, um, I wonder if you can spot it actually. If I give you 10 seconds, it's a quiet sort of move. Nothing too brilliant. But very effective. Okay, King F3, just guarding E2 for a moment. Which means the Rook now powerfully can move here. Very important Rook move, Rook D2. Because now, all of a sudden, you know, Rook D5, this C5 pawn is highlighted um, as a major weakness. So we're equal on pawns here, but white seems to be uh, clearly doing very well here. In fact, you can imagine um, after rook c6, maybe something like, um, well, either the king coming in, that, that's pretty dangerous, or even c3, but then a5 to stop b4. So maybe that's not such a big deal. But uh, king g6 was played here. Now, actually, um, even more effective than rook d5 perhaps is rook d8. Well let's get an engine verdict on what's going on here actually. This is this is quite fascinating uh, for rook and pawn and enthusiasts. If actually rook d5 seems you know not that bad either. <laughs> check, check, let's, let's okay get the king over here to protect this. What happens here? Maybe it should be about equal, to be fair. It should be about equal, this position. I can't imagine why rook d8, apart from rook a8, I think maybe, maybe okay, let's let's give this a shot now. 
in this position. Rook d8 is the game continuation, and it's still, from an engine point of view, it was about equal. So something very wrong happens after this, then, for black to lose this game. Um, maybe it was here. I mean, King g6, is that a mistake? Because Rook c8 seems powerful here. Does black really want to give up c5? In this position, c5 is the issue. Rook c6 or rook f6. After king f, rook c8, rook e5. Rook e5. And that should be not, not that hot, but actually black decided to give up a pawn, give up that c5 pawn, and things got a bit worse in the game's continuation. So that's interesting. I think the idea is clearly to activate the black king as far as possible uh, to start harassing uh, the white pawns. So why didn't this work? Rook takes c5 check. So the king's coming in aggressively. Okay, so Rook d3 check, offering c2. Now the clever move, Rook e3, is afforded in this position. Uh, because this c pawn is a fast runner here if the rooks came off. So even if it takes, it's a case where sometimes if the king plunges in your position, you can sometimes create cheekily a runner to sort of mock the king's infiltration and the king can't go back to defend that running past pawn. So here rook e3 is a powerful move. And it seems echoed now. Okay, so what has happened here from an engine point of view? Definitely, it's it's backfired on black. This this king activity plan. Um, rook e3. Or, or maybe, I don't know. I don't know. It looks as though it still isn't a big advantage. Okay, so rook b6. The king comes in though now. And again, there's this idea that if, if black takes here, then this c pawn is just running. a5, okay, black's getting ready for her, c, her a pawn. But the c pawn is now of great significance, I think. More significant than the a pawn, unfortunately for black. And it looks very nice uh, for white to play this uh, rook and pawn ending. The past pawn is, is being herded through, and here, Black resigned. So to be fair, actually, this this game was only a small advantage for White. Um, even after that brilliant knight takes b5, there was nothing really huge about it. The advantage. Black tried to activate the king there, and it seemed to backfire to create a superior candidate past pawn. That c pawn was always a bit dangerous. Let's look in overview and summary now. So. Interesting. Apparently, Yifan who does have tournaments, sometimes she has a bad start. Hopefully, she'll do better later in the tournament. But uh, so far, uh, according to Chess Game Comments, she's had two losses. Um, and this is one of them. But it's it's not. It was like um, a spirited loss, really, keeping the king in the centre like this, getting the bishop pair. I mean, usually, I think it's still regarded, you know, as having the advantage to have the bishop pair. Uh, we saw an example recently uh, from Carolina crushing someone with the bishop pair, but here is a case where the two bishops versus the two knights seem ineffectual. It's, it all really depends on the position. That's the brutality of, of chess. That in in this position, it's difficult for, it seems, uh, black to get the bishops going, especially with the king in the center and this semi open A file uh, for dynamic, dynamic um, possibilities by white, like knight takes b5 here. So white's just snapped up a pawn anyway, leaving black really um, in this position. If black doesn't play uh, bishop takes c3, then there's an, a kind of iron blockade on the diagonal. Say d4, this 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 is no good. This bishop is really is not going to be effectual anytime soon. Uh, so I didn't know. I don't really know what black can do apart from bishop c3 here. Uh, taking might allow knight takes. Um, 
and you know there's things like queen h5 if the queen's not guarding uh, h5 because the king's still in the center so it's a case where the, the bishops don't seem that effectual here for specific uh, reasons so the bishop has given up but still it looks as though black to be fair is okay here for a long time uh, the rook and pawn ending you know maybe it was a slight slip to for the queen exchange so it seems c5 and this c pawn are, are the ones uh, destined to win this game winning c5 and that c pawn so black is put on the back foot here in the rook and pawn ending um, so hope you enjoyed that one or got something out of it uh, comments or questions on YouTube I might do some more games from the Chinese championship just casually in the next few days because I find it quite fascinating uh, to see a different kind of nation um, becoming more prominent in the game uh, from the point of view of you know chess is such a vast game I wonder you know the influence on on um, country culture and stuff on on how it affects individual playing styles um, what what we can expect what creativity ideas are injected into the game it will be fascinating um, okay thanks very much comments or questions on YouTube cheers